think we can uh, do a little bit of an Iobid guide here. A little bit of an Iobid guide. Hello. Hello. Good luck. Have fun. Oh, this person seems very nice. Too bad they're about to get Aya bidded. Ooh, good matchup too. Alrighty. I you bids. Probably saying it very wrong, but I'm gonna try and do a little bit of a a walkthrough talk through here as I'm playing. So here I am gonna play a nice solid way to play, I think. I'm not going to take the dock, just, uh, and I don't think my opponent will either, most likely, just to kind of uh, showcase a, a regular-ish build, so the way I like to approach I a bit. Six dudes on your berries, start things off, you gather the berries faster, and wood isn't that much of an issue when you're not really going for a second TC or whatever you And so what we're going to go for here, super safe. Absolutely the standard at the moment. We're going to go for the fast castle strat. So one thing you've got to keep in mind with this one. Ayabid. Very, very, very good at fast teching these days. Your berries are a slightly bigger resource for you than other sips because you gather them faster. But also... You have more of them. Each pack contains, or each berry bush contains 100 extra. So initially you're talking about 600 food extra on top of whatever your opponent has. And you gather them faster. So, very, very, very standard here. Just going to scout about a bit. Make sure my base is looking kind of pretty. It's good to know where the berry bushes are for future reference. But given that I'm against Zhu Shi, they can do a lot of crazy stuff, actually. A lot of crazy stuff. And they are not a sieve that is easy to deal with. Everybody's probably run into that uh, Zhu Gnu rush more than once. I know I'm one of them. So if my opponent does do that, I could be in quite a bit of trouble, but we'll have to see. So, one of the first texts that's uh, stemmed a lot of uh, popularity. I think it was B that popularized it. B was at least the first player I saw doing it. Vortex also did it in the same tournament. It's the Desert Raider tech choice, which initially I looked at it, and I wasn't blown away by it. I wasn't. But as time's gone on, they did a patch change, which meant... When you build this landmark, it will spawn immediately. What it did before, it would actually wait a full 30 seconds or whatever, or a minute, before it actually spawned it. So that was a massive buff. Now it works more like the uh, military wing, except it's permanent production for the game. So really, really, really nice. You can also do other techs, such as the orchard wing, but... This one's definitely nice for just putting your opponent on the back foot immediately, which is very, very powerful. So I've got a couple of guys here on wood to make sure that I can build a house before I age up. Because last thing that you want is to get supply blocked as you're trying to rush out a tech or rush out a unit. It's one of the worst feelings in the world, that is. So... I'm going to get that house on the go. I don't think you have to worry too much about getting Golden Age with Ayavids. It is slightly worse than the Abbasid one, in that it's 10% instead of 15. But the real power spike comes when you hit age 3. So that should be your goal. Slowing down age 3, slowing down your power spike. Alrighty, I will uh, get to scouting my opponent again, because, again, don't need the sheep just yet. Focusing a lot on the berries. 
I will, for the sake of this game, start rallying onto sheep now, because this berry pack is depleting pretty damn quickly. And the big thing for me here is scout his stone. See what's going on over there. This desert raider is not good against Zugnu. Lots of units are not good against Zugnu. Shocker. Shocker. But desert raiders especially are pretty shit. Okay, no stone. Ooh, horseman. I like that choice. I like that choice. You know what? We'll start hitting this bad boy a little bit. And he's got a few of them, hasn't he? He has a few of them. Now, again, just coming in and scouting, because the big thing for us is, what's he up to? We can start getting our tech now, so it's quick tech. And we've just been relying on these two guys for our wood. And he's still boosting out those horsemen. Now, one of the first things I would like to go for if I can would be the dervish. If I can. But I might have to this game go for a, uh, a stable right off the bat. Just because he is pretty damn aggro. And I think that's a nice way of playing, actually. So, all these guys were on berries, they're not anymore. And we've actually got uh, two of these now. So I'll use the bows as he's running away. Go back to not bow. <laughs> and yes, let's uh, make sure we get uh, a bit more wood here. Wood is good. Enough for a stable. Let's pop it out. Do they run and shoot? A little bit of micro going on here. Switching between the modes. Lots of sheep there. Now we've kind of spotted where most of the relics are. Given that these camel lancers will uh, be online pretty soon. Which is great. It'll help us a lot with just dealing with them. And I might send the camel lancers straight to his base. Okay, got vision on all of the relics now. Sometimes it's worth just going for the relics that are, are uh, close to you. In a game like this, I am going to do that. First and foremost. And it's not necessarily the best idea to stay only on camel lancers, because if you get spearmen, it can be rather annoying. I'll tell you what, that's a real fast tech. That was a real fast attack. That makes me think that our opponent here is very much about contesting relics. Maybe with a monk tech, but we're going to start getting ready to go for uh, different units here. Kazushi has got nothing on gold. It usually means that they're putting their getting resources elsewhere. Most likely in the form of getting completely forgot what the unit's called. Shaolin monks. So this relic here on the map just vanished. 
Oh, it's here. So, he is indeed going for Alex. I'll rally the Camel Lancer down to the bottom here. Because we're going to get these two. That's nice. So that will step up our gold income considerably. And we've just been a bit of a nuisance. I haven't truly been able to threaten him too hard, but... And looks like we're going to be on four relics most likely here. Definitely a good spot to be. Okay, lots of spear boys. Now I tell you what, we'll put our desert raiders on the bow mode here. We'll get another mosque slash monastery. Put those extra relics in. Gonna get eco upgrades at this point. Everything's quite safe. And I tell you what, this is when I can start thinking about having a bit more of a a meaty front line, if you will. All right. I haven't got a blacksmith yet. That's one thing that I will look to add in the very near future. And our gold, and it's going to skyrocket. It certainly will. I think I'm going to throw down ghoulams. Technically, you could say crossbows could do well against most of what I'm doing here, but... I think ghoulams are just an annoying unit in the mix for him to deal with right now. Good against the spears, obviously. And yeah, you can see that gold climbing, so do I need all this gold? We'll switch off a little bit. Manage things uh, appropriately. Add this to the mix as well. And now I'll start getting some blocks. Eco upgrades because of all that gold. Might as well. Might as well go for it. Lots of horsemen. I don't mind playing against horsemen, you know. Like, we lower the damage massively with nearly every unit that we have. And I tell you what, we'll start uh, going out on the map a little bit here, I reckon. Okay, I'm going to try and focus fire down most of these spears, if we can. While it's going on, we're just macroing up. And remember, we've got those blue lambs in the mix as well that are making this quite a tanky army. Quite a tanky army indeed. More eco upgrades. Sad face. GG. That. Sub into demo is one of the best things you can do. Sub into demo is one of the best things you can do.
A little bit of an eye a bit guide there, team. A little bit of an eye a bit guide. Is something like donating? Maximilian, it's a little bit like it. It's a little bit like it. Subbing, subbing on YouTube is just to get notified when new videos are available. Subbing on Twitch, depending on the channel, here it gives you a whole array of emotes. It removes all commercials. And it does help support me for sure. Um, the Jolly Rag with a Tier 1. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's more like paying taxes. But uh, you demand Jolly Rag. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you guys liked this. Q Mamba as well. Thank you for the Prime. But yeah, like, um, I, I think subs in general are cheaper this month, and doesn't last long, obviously. The month, that is. But yeah, it removes all commercials and stuff. I hope I was... I, I It's hard for me to talk and play while being super specific about everything, but I tried to be fairly uh, good. Mitt Thoroarudo, 33 with a tier 1. Mate, thank you, thank you. 